Hey y'all, I'm Paula Dean. Now, y'all don't be fooled by this big kitchen. You know, I've always been a frugal girl, and nowadays, I make sure that I save enough to pay for my one big indulgence. So today, I'm pinching pennies again. <laughs> Bet you thought you couldn't have fish on a budget, did you? Well, my thyme mustard catfish and black-eyed pea cakes taste great, and they have a price tag that's just as appetizing. I'm also gonna fix up some extra special coleslaw with a twist. And for dessert, we're gonna be having a creme caramel, which sounds and looks fancy, but just wait till y'all see how simple it is. So keep your money in the bank, because today's show is all about eating like a king for less. Today's meals are about making economy-friendly food. And nothing does that like salmon. In fact, the dish that I'm gonna start making today is, is such a good dish to make because not only is it cost efficient, but it's the products that you have in your pantry. I'm gonna make a cream caramel custard and I've already gotten the cream caramel made, and I've started that by taking a half a cup of sugar and a few drops of water and just caramelizing that sugar. And over here, let's start making our custard. Now I'm gonna start with five eggs, a half a cup of sugar, three cups of milk, a pinch of salt, and a teaspoon of vanilla. And I know that those ingredients are found in everybody's kitchen. So I'm gonna start by cracking our eggs in a separate dish, because we'll wanna check them all out, make sure they're all right. Okay, so there's five clean eggs, and I'm gonna mix that with a half a cup of sugar, and I'm just gonna beat this until it's a light, pretty lemony color and kind of fluffy. Okay. I'm gonna throw in a pinch of salt, one teaspoon of vanilla, and then I'm gonna slowly add three cups of milk. All right, let's take a look at this. And now I'm gonna just pour it right back into my measuring cup because it has a spout on it and it'll allow me to fill the custard cups without making a tremendous mess. I'm gonna take a little bit of our caramelized sugar and put in the bottom of each buttered custard cup. All right, so in we go. And I'm gonna fill them to, to the spot that the dish starts to flare out. Just right there on that rim. And this is really just a basic egg custard recipe but my, by me taking just a couple of minutes to caramelize that sugar, it's gonna take an ordinary dish and turn it into an extraordinary dessert. So I'm gonna ease this over to our oven, and I'm gonna cook this in a water bath. And this is hot water, and I'm gonna fill this pan up until it comes about halfway up my custard cups. So these are ready to go in. 
I'm gonna put them in a 350 preheated degree oven and I'm gonna let them bake for about an hour. Well, I've already made one batch. Look at that, how pretty is that? Now remember, I poured our custard into buttered souffle cups. So all I wanna do is take my knife and run around the edges and make sure I give that a little head start on loosening it. And I'm gonna take my container, flip it upside down, and peek in here and see if it needs any help. Look at that. I don't think cream caramel is quite the same without a little bit of fresh whipped cream. Just to make it look like I'm eating healthy, I'm gonna put some green on it. Just a little fresh mint. And then the next thing I'm gonna put on it is my spoon. So good, so, so good. And we have made this for pennies. When we come back, I'm gonna share with y'all a wonderful catfish that I marinate in thyme and mustard, and it's so good. Catfish is one of those wonderful fish that doesn't throw you into a new tax bracket. And to serve along with that, I'm gonna be cooking up some black-eyed pea cakes, cause honey, black-eyed peas is just pennies. probably thinking, now who is she kidding? What is she doing making money saving meals and her in that kitchen? Well, I have to tell y'all, I'm not an extravagant person. I'm just not. It's embedded in my mind that I'm the bag lady and I'll die being the bag lady. So, you know, in order to pay for this kitchen, I have to think about money saving meals. And this is gonna be one of them. Now these black eyed pea fritter cakes, you can always go to the pantry and pull out a can of black eyed peas. It's been seasoned with like ham hock. You can buy these at the grocery store, probably 79 cents a can. So they're very, very reasonable. Now to these black eyed peas, I'm gonna add about a half a cup of bacon that's been cooked crisp. All right, next I'm gonna add a third of a cup of roasted red peppers. This is coming straight out of a jar that I bought at the grocery store. To make sure this binds together, I'm gonna come over here with a little flour that's been seasoned with salt and pepper. And before we finish mixing, I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna cut on our frying pan. And I'm gonna fry these in like a fourth of a cup of oil, and I'm gonna put a couple of tablespoons or a heaping tablespoon of butter and let those flavors mix together because the butter is gonna give them just an added richness. So I'm just gonna form these into patties, and now I'm just gonna dust the outside with just a little bit of our seasoned flour. But I'm gonna kinda do these oval shaped just like that. I don't want anybody confusing them with a uh, salmon croquette. Now I'm just gonna drop those right in our pan. Our oil and our butter has gotten hot. And I'm just gonna slip those right in there. Okay, so while these are frying, I'm gonna be frying up a catfish filet. And we're gonna start by taking our catfish and we're gonna sprinkle it with a little dried thyme. If you have fresh, use fresh. All right, now I'm just gonna coat this with a regular prepared mustard. You know, some fishes are very, very expensive. Uh, but like I said, the catfish over the years has maintained a reasonable price. And the price even gets better when you can find yourself a pond and go out and catch them. All right, now those are coated. 
Now I'm gonna put that in the refrigerator and I'm gonna let it sit overnight. And I have some in the refrigerator that's been marinating in that mustard and that thyme and soaking up those flavors. But before I go on about that, let's check our black eyed peas and see how they look. Oh, and they look beautiful. They're looking just near about perfect. Now the reason I cut that all with some butter, because butter burns rather quickly, I wanted the flavor of that butter, but I didn't want to have to worry about our black eyed pea fritters burning. So there we go, I've squished them down some, flattened them out. And let's go get our catfish out of the refrigerator that I've had marinating. Now this has been there overnight. I'm gonna put this in to some seasoned flour that's got a little salt and black pepper in it. The secret to good fried fish is making sure you've salted it. All right, so I'm gonna drop these into the grease. It's been heated to 350 degrees. That's a good temperature to fry fish on. While those are frying, I'm gonna check on my black-eyed pea fritters again. Okay. So I'm gonna take our fritters up. So our catfish are ready and they are a beautiful golden brown, but you can see just a little hint of yellow in them. And you know that little hint of yellow is coming from that mustard. Doesn't that look delicious? All right, so let's fix us a plate. The fish just turned out positively beautiful looking. And of course the black-eyed pea fritters don't look half bad themselves. You can see the pieces of thyme dancing around on the top of that fish. And I can see that bacon in those black-eyed peas. Mmm. I wish y'all were here. It's so good. And the fish, oh, oh wow. Look at that hot fish. Mm. Mm. All I can say is, Lord, please always keep my feet on the ground. Don't ever let me leave my food that I was raised up on. Cause even if it does cost pennies, it's still the best in the whole world. When we come back, y'all, I'm gonna be making a wonderful coleslaw to go with these black eyed pea cakes and that wonderful mustard thyme catfish. A catfish meal just isn't a meal until it has coleslaw. And that's what I'm fixing to make next for y'all. This is a wonderful coleslaw recipe. Now the cabbage that I'm gonna use today is a already shredded cabbage. This is still a very inexpensive way to make coleslaw. But if you want to really get down and save, then you can get a whole head of cabbage and shred it. But I'm using the already shredded cabbage for today. Now to this cabbage, I'm gonna add a half a cup of toasted sliced almonds, a fourth of a cup of diced spring onions or green onions, a half a cup of diced green peppers, a half a cup of diced celery, and one cup of dried cranberries, and this 
This dried fruit is so good when you mix it with the dressing and the cabbage. You got a lot of flavors working and it's really, really good. And then I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna make the dressing that we're gonna use to moisten this cabbage up and really take it to the next level. And I'm gonna start with a half a cup of mayonnaise. And y'all will want to remember that when you're dealing with cabbage, cabbage contains a lot of water. So you won't wanna drench it or drown it in dressing. It takes very, very little to moisten your cabbage. All right, I've got a half a cup of mayonnaise. I've got one tablespoon of honey. And I've got one tablespoon of diced sweet relish. And I'm just gonna mix those together. And I'm gonna add a little fresh ground pepper. And I'm gonna add a little salt, but I have to tell you, that salt is gonna act as a drawing agent on that cabbage, and it's gonna pull every bit of the water out of that cabbage, and it's gonna make it soupy. So you can see that I have very, very little dressing for this big old bowl of cabbage. You can see all the pretty colors. Now I'm just gonna kinda toss that. And if you think, well my goodness, that's not enough dressing, that's all right. Go ahead and put it in the refrigerator because it's gonna get more moist and more moist as it sits. Down south, we can't have a fish dinner without this and grits or black-eyed pea fritters or fried sweet potatoes or french fries. We gotta, we gotta have some good starches along with these cool, wonderful vegetables that we serve with it. So just that easily, I've got that mixed up. And you can see how quickly using the store-bought cabbage brought this dish together for me. So I'm just gonna pour this into the serving bowl that I'm gonna be using later. I'm gonna cover it and put it in the refrigerator. And it's gonna be ready to go with that yummy catfish and black-eyed pea fritters. And that's all it is to making a good coleslaw. And I'll think that you'll find that this recipe is really has a, a different little twist and it's gonna be such a nice change from that humdrum coleslaw. Hope you like it. I'm gonna stick this in the refrigerator and when we come back, I'm gonna share a time-saving, money-saving dish for you that your family's gonna be thanking you for. So I'll see y'all back here in a minute. If I told y'all in my lifetime how many salmon croquettes I had made for my family, you'd probably call me a liar. But y'all, this is one meal that I could put together for four people, four adults, for under $2. That would, what is that, 50 cents a person. You start with just a canned salmon from the grocery store, put it into a bowl, flake it up, stir in a beaten egg, some green onions. I'm gonna just mix that all together. Add some breadcrumbs to bind them. This and a pot of cheese grits. You've got a wonderful meal. Oops! And look at our oil over here, just, just to getting all brown on us. I'm gonna dump that into a little larger bowl. I'm gonna dust those with some more breadcrumbs. Drop them into the pan. And I'm gonna fry those for a couple of minutes on each side. And let me tell you how my boys love to eat their salmon croquettes. I always had to put a bottle of cane syrup on the table because they wanted to pour syrup over their salmon croquettes. Go figure. Ooh. 
and you only have to fry these just for a couple of minutes. A nickel's worth of grits, and you're in business, baby. I never want to get so uppity that I forget who I am and where I came from. So I was really, really touched to be able to share these recipes with y'all today because they do represent who I am and where I came from. And I never want to outgrow these kind of recipes. The mustard fried catfish, the black eyed pea fritters, the cream caramel, the coleslaw, and my goodness, salmon croquettes. You just can't find any better food or more honest food or more economical food. Until next time, y'all, I send you love and best dishes from my kitchen to yours.